away from what would be the center of that circle, straight away in, in a radial direction. Now, if the energy is even stronger, what you'll have is the energy will spill out past the checkerboard border in one of these where you're putting the interference in. And between two of these conical places or two of the things that are forming the giant radials, two of them will get together. When that happens, the inner circle will disappear. And so you have the same pattern you just had with a, a giant radial coming out, and on the other end of it, there is another giant radial pointing back into another a center. Only the circle in the center is now missing. In this case, the line of clouds is just a little bit fatter. It's about three times as, as thick as the other line of clouds. And now you're looking at two of them, which are, will be uh, anywhere from 20 to 30, even 40 miles apart, which will be moving along in the sky. Uh, the one I saw was moving, uh, as best I could estimate it, about 25 miles an hour. And what you're looking at is you're looking at a part of the grid where the energy is being formed, and you're looking at a very, very slow rotation of this <coughs> occurring by uh, <coughs> movements on the transmitters coming from Russia. And what we're doing with that is we're capturing entire cloud masses and moving them right along to control the weather. And we're, of course... Uh, ca uh, changing the pressure in the air, and we can do weather engineering that way. Now, <clears throat> I took off from a trip to California. I took off from Huntington Beach, and I had to leave very early to catch the airplane. This was in December, and it was prior to that extreme cold snap we had that broke so many records in the country. <clears throat> As I left Huntington Beach, there was a giant radio sitting right over Huntington Beach. As I got on the airplane then, finally, and came on out to... Uh, coming into Memphis, when I was about 400 miles from Memphis on a United flight, uh, at sitting up at about 30,000 feet was an absolutely flawlessly perfect giant radial. I flew right over it. I, we were up at about 35,000. And so I was about 5,000 feet above this thing, looking right out at it, an absolutely perfect specimen, and I didn't have a camera with me. But anyway, on the same trip, I saw two of them <clears throat> very far apart in the United States, one halfway across the United States from the other. I've seen three or four here over Huntsville, Alabama, and I saw one in Florida in October on a trip with another person there. We saw a, a giant radio sitting off down in Florida. Now, the next morning, we saw one in southern Alabama, <clears throat> which preceded... Uh, quite a bit of violent thunderstorm activity, including some tornado activity in South Alabama. If you twist the weather currents around, you're going to get some tornadoes in the right season. So you can augment the tornado activity. You can augment the rain activity. You can move great masses of clouds, great cloud banks, over great cloud covers over a large part of the United States. And you can actually change the jet stream itself and change the pressure areas. And then by very slow rotation, so that you don't slip out and lose the stuff you're capturing halfway around the world, you can move those cloud masses and influence the weather substantially. <clears throat> and in my opinion, that's been going on over our head, uh, certainly since shortly after the death of Brezhnev. There was considerable activity with giant radials and uh, the virtual transmitters and the grid network uh, shortly before that very, very unusual cold snap, <clears throat> which broke so many records in so many cities all across the country. Uh, 1983 was a very unusual weather year. Uh, certain records were really broken. For example, I don't have all my information collated to get just yet, but I can give you a few things. One of the things was <clears throat> the highest barometric pressure ever recorded was recorded in 1983. Another thing that happened that was unusual, of course, was the coal records in, in quite a few cities, some, oh, 75 or 100 of them, were broken. All time records were broken in that uh, December cold snap we had. Uh, let's see, another thing that was very unusual, uh, <clears throat> the uh, turbulence or the uh, amount of swirling of the air in the atmosphere was some 10% uh, or so, 8 to 10% higher, according to the Weather Service, uh, than is, <laughs> has been noted. And so we had some very unusual things occur, some very unusual extremes occur 
in the year 1983 uh, closely correlated with this very unusual activity of adjusting in over North America a gigantic grid of virtual transmitters which can be used to control the weather. So, uh, in my opinion, what I'm describing to you is the evidence, uh, ad admittedly somewhat circumstantial at this point, but certainly the giant radials can be photographed. I now have photographs of one. <clears throat> the grids can be photographed, and certainly they can be observed. I'm encouraging everybody to start observing the clouds and look for those formations. If you see those formations, uh, let somebody know. Let me know uh, the sighting that you've seen them. Draw a sketch. If you've got a photo uh, camera, take a photograph. Uh, if you can't let me know, let Bill Jenkins know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'd like <laughs> everybody to load their camera, get it ready, keep your eye in the sky, take a picture of it, note what time it was taken, um, or if you don't have a camera, at least uh, write me and say, I saw it here and I saw it there. Get it to me, and I'll get it on to you, Tom. Uh, because I have seen, myself, those circles and the radials going out for them, not, not knowing about this sort of thing. I said, isn't that odd? But we do have them over Los Angeles. Now, they're real clever over California. The one in Huntington Beach that morning, they had just cut the power out of it, and it was beginning to dissipate. But because I was out so early, I was out just after the crack of dawn, I got to see the thing. But an hour later, uh, if you'd looked at the sky, if you hadn't known that there'd been a real solid one there, you know, you'd have said, well, there's just a very unusual shaped cloud, set of clouds sitting up there. Because it was dissipating from the winds aloft after the power had been cut. Now, <clears throat> the other thing I'd like to point out is everything I'm describing is direct, directly related to the work of Wilhelm Reich, yes. the cloud buster and so forth. Mm -hmm. What a cloud buster puts out is a peculiar kind of radiation, which is really what I've been calling the zero vector radiation or the scalar radiation. And what it's causing is a peculiar kind of resonance between the scalar currents in the ground and the scalar currents in the atmosphere. And as William Wright clearly showed, and other people who have showed after him have shown with Cloudbusters, you can, for example, influence with that simple device and that kind of resonance. You can influence gigantic masses of clouds, and you can shape the weather. And you can also do it by the transmitters I'm, I'm discussing here, and you can do it halfway around the world, which is what I think is being done to us. So anyway, that's a, <clears throat> a sort of a cook's tour, a short tour through the weather engineering over North America. I am going to give a paper on this this summer at one of the conferences, and the paper will be published and available from John Ratzlaff as soon as I get the time to finish writing it. I'm gathering the rest of the data for it now, and I will print the pictures in there of the giant radial that I took here over Huntsville. And if I'm lucky or if somebody else sends me one, we'll have other pictures of these giant radials as well. Well, we hope everybody gets their camera out and starts looking for those, and we'll describe those again. Tom, do you want to take a break with me for just a second? We'll yeah. do a couple of things and get right back to weather engineering, which is going on above our heads at the present time by our dear friends of the Soviets. Be right with one of our distinguished scientists in this world. He's been involved with the weapons analysis of the Soviet Union for the Pentagon. He's been involved in developing some of our more formidable weapons uh, systems here in the United States. He's a man who knows exactly what he's talking about. And he kind of riveted us here, Tom. You hear for the last 40 minutes talking about the manipulation of weather over the United States by the Soviet Union. He told us some things to look for where you can see it happening yourself. And certainly we've been feeling it here in California. You've been feeling it there in Alabama where you're talking to us from tonight. And it's getting to be a serious problem. Yes, it is. And uh, until we, you know, bring this thing out strongly enough that we have enough people seeing it, photographing it, uh, the idea here is if we get enough people reporting what's happening in the sky, you'll get the regular scientists in looking at it, and you'll get the government.